Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas and today we're going to be taking a 2x4 and making a Fresnel lens stand like we use in all of our videos. When you select the wood for a 2x4, you want to make sure that it's very straight and that it doesn't have any curves to it. And you also want to, for this, choose a piece of wood that is heavy. If you go to a home improvement store, 2x4s vary in weight. I actually like the lighter ones better for the frames, but for the stand, you want one that's heavy. What we're going to be doing is ripping the 2x4 in half. 2x4s are actually 3.5 inches across, so you want to set your guide to be 1 and 3 quarters, but you have to accommodate for the width of the saw blade, which takes about an eighth of an inch off. So you want to set it for a little bit less than 1 and 3 quarters. And then I'm going to show you a little trick where you nip the wood, flip it over, and you can see if you're right in the center. If you did this correctly, you should have these as identical width now. So you should have something that looks just like that. You're going to set your miter saw for a 45 degree cut. You're going to place the wood. I like to take the part that I cut and place it inward. It doesn't really matter. You can flip it the other way. You want to cut it either the side that you ripped or the opposite side. You don't want to do it like this. So in other words, you don't want to do it to the thinner part. You want to have the slightly longer piece. So this should measure just short of one and three quarters, which it does. Now you want to take your miter saw and you want to cut, do a 23 inch cut to the top, not the bottom of this, to the top. So you want to measure to the very top. On this particular ruler, it has 23 and 25 that go across from each other. So we want to go 23 and to the inside. So it'll actually be the 25 mark, but you want the peak to be 23 inches. So we're going to measure that. Put your safety equipment on. Now this piece should measure 23 inches and it does. Take the second leg and basically repeat the process. Use, you can use this one as a guide. So what I like to do is take this and put it down in there, just like that. Make sure these are the identical height, just push it up against the blade. Hold the wood down with the saw without turning it on. We now have one of each from different legs that are the identical size. They're the same exact size. Now what you're going to do is flip this leg like that. And now you're going to straighten your saw. Alright, the next step is to set your saw to zero degrees. You don't want any angle on this next cut. And what you do is you take your wood, which should have a cut like that. Now this is still the long piece. So you can see that that's a long piece of wood that's left over from that. Since we already cut 45 once, we're just going to reuse, we're going to use this cut twice. So you want to measure from this peak up here for the second cut, 25 inches. And then you want to, we're going to come over here. We're going to go from the 25 inch mark. There's a reason why we do them at two different heights, which you'll see in a little bit. So you can see where it is with the ruler. So you now have a leg that looks like that. And you have this long post here. Okay, this piece. We're going to put this off to the side. We're going to do the same thing. What we're going to do is we're going to use the secondary leg, the one that hasn't been cut yet, or the secondary stand piece. And we're just going to take these, and you can see what I'm going to do. The best way to do it is to line the ends up like that, so that way they're nice and flush. You measure it, just push it up against the saw blade, hold it in place. So we have the two different legs right here. One of them has a 
is about two inches shorter. You can see that they're two inches shorter from top to bottom. And you've got your leg set here. This is going to be the stand post that holds it in place. So what we're going to do is you need a table for this that is perfectly, has a nice perfect straight edge. You also need, this is a drywall ruler and basically any T-square, you, you need to make this square. That's, that's very important to do. So what I usually do is I'll line this up to the table so that we know that we're set and then I attach, the, just place the wood there so I know the wood's exactly where it needs to be. Now what you do is you take your legs, just like this, since one's longer and one's shorter, they're going to end up in different places. So what you do is you use the base of the table as your guide and you put one leg to the very point there. The other leg to the very point here. This is a little tricky to do sometimes. You want to make sure that they're nice and flush and that they match up there and there. So you've got that done. So now you can see these are two inches apart. And the reason that we leave this space is so I can drill a screw here on the second one to lock it into place. If they were even, the screws would all bang together and you'd have all of your screws right in the center. Instead, you've got screws here and screws here. And that's why that's the only reason. Because this is all square here, it's going to be the exact perfect height. Now, this needs to be square because if it's not, this is going to be angled when it's up. So now what you do is you take a pen and you mark there and you mark there and then you're pretty much set. What I'm going to do is get this first one drilled. You can see you want to go down about it. You want to go as close to center as you can with this. So just make it real easy. Mark it with your drill. Flip this up. Put yourself a little pilot hole there. So then this is going to go in real tight like that. So we're going to take these and I've got it glued up. I'm going to put some extra glue on there. We're going to go towards the edge of our table so I can reach it from over here. We have a extended Phillips head bit on here. And we're going to take a two and a half inch screw. Three inch will actually pop out the other side. So So what you should have is something that looks like that. Now we're going to put some extra screws here and you can pretty much just pre-drill them, drive them in. You want this to be as sturdy as possible. So what we do this time is we drill right into the top of this and straight down about, I don't know, maybe an inch away. Just drill yourself a small pilot hole. This bit, by the way, is eighth of an inch. So, so I've got this nice and flush here, nice and straight. You put a lot of pressure on it. You can see I'm squeezing the glue out of it. Make sure this, this is even. Go ahead and sink it a little bit in there. And there's your second leg. Alright, so we've got this. Now, what I'm going to do is show you how this looks. This is the interesting part for the second side. You line the wood up. You take your short piece, line it up there. With a long piece, line it up with the other leg. Make sure that they're all the same. You can actually, if you have wood clamps, it's a good idea to clamp these together. So that way you can uh, hold them in place. What you do is you mark your wood here. You mark it there. Since everything's identical, these stands are going to be the same. So I'm going to put a little S there so we know that that's this one. It goes off to the side. And then you basically repeat that process. So you could pretty much stop right here. I've done plenty of stands that that alone holds it. So if you don't have an extra piece of wood, you don't have to do this. But what I like doing is cutting another 45 there, lining this up and matching it as closely as possible down here. 
And what this will do is this will keep these from pulling out, from spreading apart. So I'm going to go ahead and build these since this stands for some somebody I know. Measuring this can be kind of tricky. So you can see that I, I'm going to show you what happened when I did this. It's better to cut it a little bit longer. You can see there's a gap in there. Because if you go shorter, you really can't deal with it. Now what I'm going to do is just trim this down a couple times until I close this gap here. So you close the gap by cutting this just a little shorter, checking it, cutting it a little shorter, checking it again. They should be almost perfect. Alright, so if you did everything right, you should have this going on right here. You can see these are almost practically identical in size, and that's your stand right there. This is about a little, a little bit, almost five foot tall. So when your lens is on there, it makes it a lot taller. This is how you make two identical Fresnel stands. And if you hold these up, they are the same and they're perfectly they're not tilted or anything so your lens goes between these like this and bolts into place and then you can add a small metal bar there if you want <laughs>